the day after, it was like nothing had happened. I came downstairs and saw the ashtray in its usual place on the coffee table. I looked around for signs of damage, but found none. The ashtray was heavy, translucent green glass. The sunlight coming in through the living room windows would sometimes get caught by it, refracted into a prism of colors on the wall. I liked the feel of it, its coolness and heft, the smoothness of its sides. The four of us were in bed that night. I shared a room with my younger brother. My two sisters were in their room upstairs in the attic. Our parents were outside at a block party. As I drifted off to sleep, I listened to the sounds of laughter and shouting rising in waves above the music. When I remember that night, I see it all. I see everything that happened as if a movie is playing in my head. Yet, I saw none of it. I heard it all, but I did not see any of what happened. I never left my bed. Dad comes home first, slamming the front door and waking me. I hear him go to the kitchen and open the refrigerator, then the pop and hiss of a can of beer. He sits down in the living room, muttering to himself. I see him in an oversized sombrero, a thin mustache penciled on his upper lip, bandoliers crossing his chest, and six shooters at his side. It is a costume party and he is dressed as a Mexican bandit. My mother comes to the front door and knocks. Dad doesn't get up. She knocks again, louder this time. John, open the door. Dad sits, not moving. He is laughing. She is now pounding on the door as my father's laughter grows. She rings the doorbell and then leans on it. The loud buzzer reverberates through the house. Dad just laughs louder. My mother is screaming for him to let her in and banging on the door with her fists. My father turns on the TV. For a while, it is quiet, except for the muted sounds of the television. Sometime later, there is a gentle knock. John, please open the door. It's very late. It's grandpa, dad's father. Mom must have called him from a neighbor's house. Oh Christ, dad mumbles as he gets up and opens the door. I see my father standing on the porch, looking at his bandito son, then down at the ground. Without saying another word, he turns and hurries down the porch steps. After he leaves, my parents start in on each other. Dad staggers upstairs as mom continues yelling. When he gets to the top, right outside my bedroom door, he turns to see my mother at the bottom of the stairs, holding the ashtray. She is dressed as a Dutch girl, wearing a triangular hat and false braids, rouge on her cheeks. Mom surprises him by heaving the ashtray all the way up. He just manages to get out of the way as it hits the wall and thuds on the floor. Still laughing, Dad picks up the ashtray and throws it back down. It hits the floor at the bottom of the stairs, careening into the closet door. She throws it again and he tosses it back, sending it tumbling down the stairs. They hurl it back and forth until both of them are spent. My mother stays in the living room, smoking cigarettes. I can see her on the couch, the room blue with smoke, her hand shaking as she stubs out another lipstick-stained Salem 
into the glass ashtray. Some decades later, I asked my mother about that night. Of course I remember, she said. I was locked out of my own house, and not one of my four children would come down to let me in. <laughs>